if you need a constant current source or sink, and it doesn't need to be too precise, here's a couple of simple transistor circuits you can use with just a couple of parts and low cost. An example of needing a constant current source may be for driving LEDs when a simple resistor is insufficient, maybe because you want to be able to take this circuit and switch out the kind of LED and you end up with a totally different current suddenly, or you want to add multiple LEDs in series, you'll have to recalculate and change out the current limit resistor. It would be nice if you could just set the circuit up for a specific current and then just drive the LEDs. Of course, you could get a special constant current LED driver chip, or use another type of circuit, maybe something with op amps, or even an LM317 regulator as a current source. But for now, we'll assume we don't need anything too precise, and we're going to stick with transistor circuits. With a basic LED and current limit resistor, we would set this up for a specific LED. For example, I have a yellow LED with a forward voltage of 2 volts, and if I power this from 9 volts, let's say I want to drive the LED with 10 milliamps of current. To figure out what resistor I need, I need to figure out what voltage is going to be across this resistor. So 9 volts supply minus 2 volts across the LED gives me 7 volts on the resistor divided by the 10 milliamps I want through this circuit, and I need a 700 ohm resistor. And the closest standard value I have would be 680 ohms. So I would go with that and get close to 10 milliamps. So let's take a look at that simple circuit and see some of its limitations. For the LED resistor circuit, I'm measuring 670 ohms on my 680 ohm resistor. When I turn on the power supply with one LED with an ammeter in series, I'm getting about 10.4 milliamps. So the main supply, 9 volts, almost 9.1. But the problem is, when we switch to a different type of LED, or we want to add more LEDs in series, now we're down to only 7.4 milliamps, because now we have an extra voltage drop to deal with, so there's even less voltage across the resistor to set the current. An improved constant current source would be a circuit like this transistor with a voltage divider bias on the base. This collector resistor, if we replace that with an LED, and we have these other three resistors, we can set this up so that the emitter resistor controls the current through the LED when the transistor is on. So just like the simple circuit, we have an LED and a series resistor and a power supply. And that's basically what's going on right here. So if this is an LED, in order to set the current, we need to design this bias voltage divider to turn the transistor on a certain amount to give us a known voltage here across this emitter resistor. Then once we know this voltage we are designing for, we calculate the resistor values here on the base of the transistor to get that voltage right here, and we know the current we want through this series circuit, we can calculate the resistor value we need to get that current through the LED, and then we can put as many LEDs in series here as we want, as long as we still have enough supply voltage to forward bias them all, and because it's a series circuit where the current is controlled by this resistor, we should get about the same current flowing no matter what. Unlike the simple circuit where if we change the LEDs, we have a totally different current going through this. So without going into a lot of the math, we need to take into consideration the gain, or beta, of the transistor, which for a general purpose, 2N3904, we could assume is going to be around 100 beta or greater. And different transistors from different batches may have different beta values. So to make this circuit operate relatively consistently, depending which transistor you put in here, we can make the circuit independent of the beta value of the transistor if beta times the emitter resistor is much greater than the value of these two voltage divider resistors in parallel. So a simpler way to look at this, we can just say beta times the emitter resistor is much greater than just the value of R2. Because if we look at an example of parallel resistors, say we have a 10K in parallel with a 1K, the value of those two resistors in parallel, 909 ohms, it's less than the smallest value. So we're just going to solve for this R2, 
and then determine what R1 needs to be. So if we simplify this down to 100 times the emitter resistance is much greater than R2, we can also say R2 is much smaller than 100 times emitter resistance. But what does much smaller mean? Well, let's just say one-tenth is much smaller enough. So we'll define that if we have a value of resistor for the emitter, R2 should be less than or equal to 10 times the emitter resistor value. And that should satisfy this equation here. So let's do the calculations on a specific example of this and try the real circuit. So since we're using an NPN 3904 and the LED is up here, this is a current sink because we are providing a path to ground. If we used a PNP transistor and put the LED toward ground and we provide a positive supply, now this is a current source, but generally these are all considered current sources. It's just more the direction of current flow. So a few things we need to do here. When the transistor is turned on, this path between the plus supply through the LED, through the transistor, and the emitter resistor to ground, we can think of this as a single series circuit where the collector current is approximately close enough to equal the emitter current. Next, we have to decide what kind of voltage value do we want on this emitter resistor. And in order to give enough overhead here to add in more LEDs with more voltage drops, I've decided that the voltage on the emitter resistor is going to be one volt. So with a nine volt supply, and there's one volt across this resistor and some other voltage across the transistor, we have several volts here where we can work with adding more LEDs. I want to be able to drive the LEDs at 10 milliamps, so I've declared that. And now I can calculate, I need a 100 ohm resistor if I have one volt across this resistor and I want it to give me 10 milliamps. Now I have to calculate R2 and we've decided R2 is less than or equal to one tenth of beta times emitter resistor. So if beta is 100, R2 is less than or equal to 10 times 100 ohms or less than or equal to 1K. So I'm just gonna choose R2 being 750 ohms because I have it on hand. In order to calculate this R1 value, we can use ratios because the ratio of voltage resistor one over voltage resistor two is equal to the resistance of R1 over the resistance of R2. To find the voltage across R2, it's going to be the voltage across the emitter resistor, which we know is one volt, plus the voltage between base and emitter when the transistor is on, which is a silicon junction 0.7 volts. So the voltage on R2 is 1.7 volts. Therefore, the voltage across resistor 1 is 9 volt supply minus the 1.7 volts on R2. So the voltage on R1 is 7.3 volts. Now we know the two voltages and we know the resistance on R2. So we calculate R1 would be 3.22K. When we set this up, we should have about 10 milliamps flowing through this LED even if we add extra LEDs or change the type of LED with a different forward voltage on it. So let's set this up and see how it works. Here I have an emitter resistor, supposed to be 100 ohms, measures around 98. When I put that in circuit, we have about 9.7 milliamps for one LED. And we're supposed to have about one volt across that emitter resistor. We have about 0.96 volts, so that's close. Now going from one LED at 9.7 milliamps, if we have two LEDs, it's still about 9.7 milliamps. Three LEDs, it drops a bit, 9.64 milliamps. And VCC is measuring 9.15 volts right now. So as we change VCC, if we make it lower, so now we're down to around eight volts, and the current is around 7.6 milliamps. Because now we changed the voltage on the voltage divider at the base of the transistor by having a different VCC, so the transistor is at a different operating point. So we only have 0.76 volts across the emitter resistor and a different current limit. An improvement on the previous transistor circuit would be this one, where instead of a resistor divider, what we're doing now is we're using diodes to provide a fixed base voltage 
When we have a circuit with a power supply and a resistor, and then some diodes, whether it's zeners, LEDs, or regular silicon, if we make sure there's enough current through the diodes, we should have a constant 0.7 volt drop across each diode as the supply changes, and the remaining voltage would be dropped across this resistor. So in this case, we still have an LED and a current limit resistor on the transistor, and this time when we are setting the voltage across this resistor, instead of arbitrarily choosing something like one volt and then calculating resistors to get that, with two diodes, this voltage here is going to be 1.4 volts on the base, and we know there's an also a 0.7 volt drop between base and emitter, because this is another silicon junction. So that means the voltage across this emitter resistor is automatically the same as the voltage across this diode, which is 0.7 volts. So if we know we want 10 milliamps, and we know we have a fixed 0.7 volts on the resistor, the value of resistor to get 10 milliamps is going to be 0.7 volts divided by 10 milliamps is 70 ohms. And the nearest standard value we have is 68 ohms. So 68 ohms here should give us about 10 milliamps through the LED. Then as we change this supply voltage, we should still have 1.4 volts at the base and 0.7 volts across this resistor stabilizing the current as VCC changes within reason. We could also use a Zener diode or any other LEDs. We can use multiple diodes if for some reason we want to get different voltages right here across this resistor because we don't want to use this sort of resistor value for some reason. The only remaining component is this 1.6K resistor. The reason I chose that, if we look at the datasheet for a typical silicon diode, in order to make sure we do get 0.7 volts across the diode when forward biased, we need to make sure we have at least a couple of milliamps flowing through the diodes. So the voltage across this resistor will be 9 minus 1.4 volts. That gives us close to 5 milliamps. So that should be enough to get these diodes conducting enough to make sure we have 0.7 volts across them and make this circuit stable. For the 68 ohm resistor here, it's measuring 67.5 ohms. So I'll put that in circuit, put one LED in circuit, and we're getting pretty much exactly 10 milliamps. VCC is close to 9 volts. And across one diode, pretty much 0.7 volts, and across two diodes, 1.4 volts. Across the resistor, 0.683 volts. So 0.683 volts divided by 67.5 ohms, we should be getting about 10.1 milliamps, and we are. So if I have one LED, it's between 10 and 10.1 milliamps. Make it two LEDs, it's in the same range. Three LEDs. Now it's gone down slightly. It's still 10 milliamps though. So here as I change the supply voltage a little higher and a little lower than 9 volts, we still have a reasonably constant current through this circuit. So there's a couple of ways to use simple transistor circuits to get a reasonable constant current source or sink if you don't need anything too precise. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more content like this. I'll see you on the next video.